Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. A part of what makes it difficult to play jazz, and that's something that you really run into when you start learning jazz, is that sometimes you really have to follow the changes, and that means having one scale on one chord, and then a few moments later on the next chord you have a completely different scale, and you actually have to play a melody that works moving from one chord to the next. But this is also one of the things that really makes jazz melodies and jazz licks sound like jazz. So it is something that's also nice about jazz, even if it is difficult to learn. In this video I'm going to show you how you can get started working like this by taking some really simple scales that you're probably already familiar with, namely the pentatonic scale, the minor pentatonic scale to be uh, precise, and then I'm going to show you how you can make some jazz licks just using that one scale in two different positions. If you're already familiar with playing changes and you know some jazz pieces, but you're not using pentatonic scales, then you also want to check out this video, because using pentatonic scales is a specific sound it's more related to modern jazz, but it's also definitely something you want to have in your vocabulary. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and improve the way that you solo, check out some interesting chord voicings or arpeggios, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. This first lick is on a 2-5-1 in the key of C major. You really want to work on your 2-5-1 licks because 2-5-1 is a very common progression if you're playing jazz. So in this case it's in C major, so that's D minor 7 to G7 altered to C major 7. And the scales I'm using, I'm using a different scale for each of the chords. For the first chord, for the D minor, I'm using really a basic D minor pentatonic, so that is from something you're probably already used to, that would be this scale. So I'm really here in the fifth position, I'm gonna stay in this region of the neck, I can't stay in completely in that position. Uh, and then I'm going to use two different fingerings for the minor pentatonic scale. So first the D minor for the G7 altered. I'm using B flat minor pentatonic. And then for the C major 7, I'm using an E minor pentatonic. And I'm using the same fingering for that one as I used for the D minor. I'm just playing it two frets higher. This is really just to keep it simple and easy to work with. And of course, if you know more positions, you can always just choose other positions to work with. This is really just to get you started. And the aim is also that you really work on changing scale whenever the chords are changing. That's the skill you wanna develop here, besides being able to make some licks that sound a little bit more like jazz. On the D minor seven, the lick starts on the high E string with this A, then moving down through the string, so like this, then back to the F. And then already now I played eight notes on the D minor seven. And in this case, of course, since we're playing eighth notes, that means that now the chord is changing to G7. And I kind of need to just shift my hand up to the next position where I can play the B flat minor pentatonic. And then I have this line. So that's also pretty clearly in this scale. And then now I need to change to C major seven. And I do that by just sliding up to the E here, and then playing this melody. What you need to notice is that when I'm changing from one scale to the next, then I'm not skipping around. So it doesn't really work too well if I'm playing something like... Because you kind of want to have it sound like one long melody, and that doesn't really sound like one melody. That sounds like I'm ending one melody high and then beginning the next one. So the easiest way to do that in the beginning is to really just work on connecting and moving to a place in the next scale that's close to the one where we came from. And that's also what's happening in the line. So, so really I'm moving from this D to this D flat. And you can actually practice this as a sort of scale exercise because you already have the positions. And then if you start playing on, uh, on the D minor, so let's say that I'm starting on the D, so I have to play eighth notes, I have to play eight notes, and then I need to change scale. So I can do... And now I need to change to the B flat minor. And then now to the E minor. And now I'm back on... So now I play two bars of C major seven, which is the E minor pentatonic, and then I'm moving back to 
to the D minor. So do an, an exercise like that where you start, just start someplace in the scale, and then try and play through the scale and try to connect, whenever you need to change chord, connect to the note in the next scale that's the closest. This way of playing is really going to help you just being able to continue the melodic movement and also connect the different melodies once you start coming up with licks. In this example, I'm trying to change direction a little bit more with each of the melodies that I'm making with the pentatonic scales. And that's really just because you don't want to have melodies that are only moving in one direction. And another thing that you don't want is to have your melodies only move sort of in a stepwise motion. So the melodies that you make that only sound like... That's not going to make for very interesting or inspiring licks to, to listen to. And you want to have something that skips around a little bit more. So this one is still quite playable but uh, there are a few more skips, so... The main thing to sort of take away from this is... You can of course work on just playing in the scale, but sometimes you want to have some places where... You're not moving in a stepwise motion within the scale, and you can actually practice different things to not always play stepwise motion in a pentatonic scale. And uh, one sort of essential exercise in that is just to play this idea where you, instead of playing the notes one after each other, you skip one note. Essentially it's what you would call diatonic thirds, uh, but there are hardly ever thirds in the pentatonic scale, so it doesn't really make sense to, to work on it like that. But that would be this pattern. Of course you can also do this where you're changing the, the direction, so I'm playing up one and then down the next one. Just really basic exercises that are going to help you get intervals like this into your fingers. And you really need those, that's sort of the basis, that's where you start if you want to have melodies that are not only sort of stepwise moving. The reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that there is a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. I'm very grateful for their support and it's because of them that I can keep on making all these jazz guitar and music theory videos. If you want to help me keep making all these videos, then check out my Patreon page. And of course, if you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. As you probably have already noticed, then I quite often use legato technique when I'm playing these lines with pentatonic scales, and that's because pentatonic scales are mostly played two notes per string, and they really lend themselves well to be played with legato. So it makes sense to also just check out your pentatonic scales with legato te techniques or something like. And this is really gonna help you, especially if you wanna play sort of faster lines, because be when you're playing alternate picking on figures like this, then it, your right hand has to work really hard because it has to change string quite often. And you can of course make that a lot easier by using legato. So it's a lot easier to play that. And that's one main reason to do this. In other places it's actually also going to help your phrasing. But I think that's a little bit more of a complicated topic that I'm going to do in another video. The line on the D minor 7 here is quite simple. I'm starting on the F and then pulling off down to the D. And it's really just back up the scale. And then on the, the last part of this, really what we get is just the D minor 7 arpeggio. Because the D minor pentatonic scale is of course really just the chord, so the D minor 7 chord of that arpeggio with one extra note, which is the G, the 11th. And then from there, on the G7 altered, then I'm using a three note pattern. Uh, again, using pull-offs, so this pattern. And then I'm doing that on the next string as well. And then moving up to the high string, and then resolving to the G and the C major 7. But the idea here is that when you're playing patterns like this, then you get so the melody moving in one direction, skipping up, and then again moving down and skipping up. So there's a lot happening in the melody. It's not just running up and down the scale. And you kind of want you kind of want to use the pull-off to just give your right hand a little bit of time. 
and it also makes sense to actually work on practicing patterns like this. One exercise like this would be to play sort of descending three note groups up through the scale. So that could be something like this. If you want to check out some more ideas on how you can use pentatonic scales in a jazz context, then check out this video where I'm going over nine different ways that you can use different pentatonic scales and pentatonic ideas on a blues. If this is the first time you see one of my videos and you want to learn more about jazz guitar, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. That's about it for this time. Thank you for watching and on to next time.